In today's video, I'm going to show you how to animate a slide menu in Figma super fast. So let's begin. This is the interactive slide menu we are going to create together. So let's analyze it quickly to really understand what we need to achieve. Okay. So here, as you can see, we have this dismiss button. If I click on it, it collapses. And if I click on this hamburger menu icon, there we go. It expands. So not only should this slide menu be animated, but also this icon should be transformed to this hamburger menu icon, okay? So let's start creating it. Here, as you can see, I already designed this menu. This is the expanded version. I didn't create the collapse version. We are gonna create that together quickly. But first we need to animate our icon, okay? We need to animate it, place it right here, and then we will animate our slide menu. How can we animate that icon? Here, as you can see, I don't have two separate icons. I only have this hamburger menu icon because we are gonna create that dismiss icon together. First, I'm gonna select this icon here, this frame. I'm gonna duplicate it, hit Control D or Command D. And what I'm gonna do here is get rid of these two lines, all right? As you can see inside, we have three lines. We have one, two, three. I'm gonna get rid of this last one and this one as well. And here, I'm gonna keep this second line. I'm gonna hold down the shift key and rotate it just like this by 45 degrees. All right, let me zoom in. Now, I'm gonna duplicate it, hit Control D or Command D, right click on it, and I'm gonna click on Flip Horizontal to flip it horizontally. And as you can see, we've got this dismiss icon. But here's what we need to do. As you can see here in this icon, we have these three layers as well, one, two, three. We need to change the name of these layers because when we use the smart animate option, Figma needs to get rid of this third line and transform this first line into this one. So what I'm gonna do is select this one, change its number to one, and this one is gonna be two. And that's all. Next, we need to create a component set because we are gonna create interactive components, right? So I'm gonna select these two icons I'm going to head over to the toolbar and open up this drop down menu. And here I'm going to click on create component set. There we go. Here is our component set. And the last thing we need to do is to create connections. So I'm going to select this one, the default one, and I'm going to change its value here to closed. Next, I'm going to select this variant and change its value to opened. You can go ahead and modify this property name here for this component set to state, just like this. And now I'm gonna select this closed one, head over to the prototype tab and just connect it to this open variant, okay? Here the trigger should be on click, the animation type should be smart animate and I'm gonna change the velocity to quick because I'm gonna have that bounce effect, all right? And I'm gonna do the same thing for this dismiss icon. I'm gonna connect it back to this closed variant and the preferences look good to me, so we don't need to change anything here. All right, our icon is ready and now it's time to use an instance of this component. So here I'm gonna go to the assets tab and let me drag and drop an instance of this icon right here. And since I made this menu, this slide menu responsive using auto layout and constraints, as you can see, this icon is taking up space and everything is disorganized. So let's fix that quickly. We just need to select this icon, head over to the design inspector and click on this little icon, absolute position. And I'm gonna move it right here. It's so tiny for this button, so I'm gonna scale it up. I'm gonna hit K on my keyboard and I'm gonna set its width and height to 40, all right? Just like this. Let me set the top and right padding to 32. There we go. Okay, but here we shouldn't be able to see this hamburger menu icon, right? Instead, we need to see this dismiss icon. So I'm gonna change its state from closed to opened just like that. And also, since we want to keep this dismiss icon to the top right corner, we can adjust the constraints to top and right. So if I select this menu now, as you can see, it stays right here on the top right corner. All right, so far so good. Now it's time to animate our slide menu. For that, we also need to create a component set. So I'm gonna select this menu frame here, I'm gonna turn it into a component and then I'm gonna add a variant to it, just like this. So here we have a component set. Let me just expand it 
and I'm going to bring this second variant right here. I'm going to put it right next to this one. Perfect. All right, so what do we need to do now? First, I'm going to select this component set, this menu component set, head over to the properties section, and I'm going to change this property name to state. I'm going to select this first variant. As you can see, the value is set to open. That's fine. I'm going to select this one and I'm going to set it to closed. All right, now we need to make some adjustments to this closed variant, okay? First, we need to get rid of these texts because we don't need them. So I'm going to double click on this menu right here. I'm going to hold down the shift and control key on my keyboard and select all these text layers just like this and I'm going to remove them. Next, I'm going to select this closed variant and I'm going to try to modify its width. And as you can see, since I used auto layout and constraints already for this slide menu, it's so easy to adjust the width of this slide menu because all my elements are responsive. All right, for this variant, I don't need this circle text here. I just want to have this logo. All right, I'm going to select it once again and make it smaller. I'm going to set the width to 120, just like that. And then I'm going to select this dismiss icon and make sure that it's aligned to the center. The same thing applies to this logo. It should be aligned to the center. All right, so now I'm going to select this dismiss icon and I'm going to change it to closed. All right, now it's time to create our connections, to create our interactions, basically. To do that, I'm going to select this dismiss icon here. I'm going to head over to the prototype tab and I'm going to create a connection just like this. Here, the trigger should be on click, smart animate, quick, that's fine. Now, I'm going to select this hamburger menu icon on the other variant and I'm going to connect it back to our open variant, just like this. The preferences look good. All right, now it's time to give it a try. Let's see if it works properly. I'm going to create a frame here and I'm going to go to assets and from here, let's get an instance of this menu just like this. Maybe I can change the background's color to black just like that. Select this frame, hit play and let's see how it works. All right, I'm going to click on this dismiss icon. There we go. It works just fine. How cool is that? Thank you so much for watching this video and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. If you want to learn how to create smooth animations in Figma like what you see on Apple's website, make sure to check out this video on the screen. Have a lovely day and see you soon.